Hunter x Hunter, episode 56. Like Rapika? Oh, look at the little avatar. <laughs> he doesn't know the whole of it, the half of it. Every line Lyria says is hilarious. Uh, I don't think he's he's accounting for the end trap. Oh, they just feel so un underprepared. I almost thought like they, this wouldn't happen, given how much we've seen of the Phantom Troop at this point and how powerful they are. Part of me suspected that they would put it off, like it would be an introduction to the Phantom Troop and then we'd watch them level up over time and come back to the Phantom Troop. This is insane. It feels like they're in way over their heads still, despite all the powers Krupik has. Gon's determination, Kalua's desire to prove himself, and Leorio, whatever Leorio has, <laughs> moral support. Levity. <laughs> The real mission. <laughs> okay, who has it worse? What would you choose? Going against the Phantom Troop in a death mission or shopping with Neon? Carrying Neon shopping bags. Shopping boxes. Tough choice. One thing that gives me hope in this mission, as I mentioned, that's sort of a little bit of a wild card or ace, so to speak, is Hisoka. They have a very unexpected ally in all this. It's amazing. We're 55 episodes in. 56? The show isn't so well in its buildup, taking its time. To my memory, this is the first time, kind of, we have this high stakes, where it's like out of the parameters of competition or tournament or exam or whatever. It's like real world life or death mission danger as uh, the four of them. It feels like new territory, like a debut, and nothing really feels wasted. <laughs> like like I've said a few times now, the, the more I watch, the more I realize the early episodes were so important, way more than I could have anticipated. Like the Hunter exam, man, that was the exam of life of this world. You're just in this world. No one's coming to save you. You better be ready. And everyone will try to deceive you. Beloved X and X beleaguered. <laughs> Alright, yeah, he has fortune telling now. I like Rolo's other look better. I thought so too at first. But yeah, that's probably more accurate. That's what it seems like. The guy real creepy in that episode. I'm still writing that fanfic in my head. I normally don't do this. I normally don't like ship characters. I don't know what's different about this. But yeah, Neon Krolo feels right. <laughs> this is the most I've felt that way since Parasite with the main character and the, the street girl, street urchin. But that seems less likely now. Not to go on and on about something that doesn't even exist. But you know what I think made it work so well? It's not just like these two people are together and therefore just romance like it is a lot of the time. It's two people brought out really interesting things in the other that made both of their characters seem like they were at like the pinnacle of themselves. It was really exciting. For the shopping. Nice da. To you ka ore wa baka da na. Kusso. Crowdo saying that. Kusari yaro ni tadori tsuite ita. Kono musume ga bodyguard tsuki de yokushin ni kita mokuteki. Sore wa yahari auction da ro. Yes, the shopping. Kono musume ni wa jintai shushu ka to you. Mou hitotsu no kaon ga aru. Jintai. Like scarlet eyes. Ubatta kyoubai hin no naka ni hi no me wa atta ka. Gome. Nope. Wakaranai. That she has. What are you? Interesting. Oh wait, wait a minute. Does Kuripika have the copy of them? Damn, it's even, <laughs> even worse. Having Kuripika look for the eyes is such a brilliant choice. I don't know how, like, how intentional it was, but the idea that they're watching him, so many mixed emotions, depending on Kuripika's reading of it. They're both watching his success or failure in the revenge plot and also judging his slip. It just depends on Kuripika's own lens reflected through the eyes. Wow, wow, they just located the location. They're gonna find an empty hotel room, I guess, but their home base. So Kurapika, Gon, Kalua, Leorio are descending on them while they go out hunting for the eyes. Which, I mean, does that, that works out in Kurapika's favor, no? They're gonna be divided. I forgot which one, ones of them are destined to die. Oh, it's Melody. Did you come to provide backup? Speaking of hearing voices. 
Damn, Melody is a real one. There's something real deep there because, I mean, my feeling about it is that Quirpica hasn't really given a whole lot to Melody. They're friends, but in a way, it's been a little bit unilateral or skewed more towards Melody giving than Quirpica giving. But yeah, here she is. She's definitely connecting with with something. Boarded by the simplest trick in the book. <laughs> no shade, but finally Melody, Melody's ability coming in useful. Until now, it's just been like, I can sense their obvious emotions that are written all over their faces and the gentle flute. Oh. Yeah, this is a Melody episode. Estinto. Sure. What a, what a compliment, wow. Unlike me, who she kind of discarded. <laughs> this is Melody Kalua team up, it's not something I expected, but it's awesome. Subtle. Yeah, we don't like him. Damn, just walk in the street. Insanely good looking, charismatic. Oh, that's, that's bold. They're piecing it together. They gotta get out. Get the dogs out safely, please. Oh, he's dead. Don't say that. It's always the people about to retire or change jobs. Oh, get the dogs out safely. Oh, he's such a good boy, too. Did you order room service? How good is the dog's nan? <sighs> He's doubling down on the new job thing. Uh, Damn, he's trying to be responsible for his girlfriend too. No. There are several death sentences in anime. Retiring, almost being done with a job, and having big plans. Walking into alleyways for any reason. Getting angry when people bump into you. And God forbid, if you have a loving family living in happiness and peace. Never do those things. You gotta give him a call. You could just leave. There's no stakes. The end's not there. Oh no! I mean, there's no way of knowing that. He's just bringing a tracker with him. Is that Grand Central? Yeah, and then we can control animosity. We cannot turn off. Big, big thing for going, going big mission. The idea that they don't sense something, I don't know, it, it seems like a lot to expect or count on. Oh, this guy, he's folding again. But that is a distraction. This poor guy about to get overwhelmed. Yeah, and they think he's the chain user. Fat chance. Oh no, this is kind of chaotic. Kalua killed it though. Nailed it. Kalua did his part. Death sentence. Probably the best thing you could do right now. Kalua's going in. I feel, I feel you. I feel him. There it is. Well, at least we're more divided. Oh my god, face to face. Not just with any three members, but with Krolo. What's the move? And these two are the most impulsive two of the group. Even Gon, even Gon's like, this is too much. And our clue is there. I guess we're doing this. This is his mission. Distraction. Oh no. Oh no. I feel better the clues here. We want to join you. We want to join you. We've reconsidered. Whoa, this meeting though. This intensity. Uh, I guess we're distracted. 
俺はお前の勘を信じる鎖野郎とどこかでつながりがあるならまだ生かした方がいい。That means they're not sensing g o r i k a I came here to ask you this, actually. That's why I'm here. You can't help but love it, though, right? You can't help but admire it. You can't help but admire it. I bet he has a great answer. You can't help but admire it. You can't help but a d m i 自分を掴む鍵はそこにあるか。And Crollo existential crisis. I mean, that was a surprisingly great answer. It's not an answer at all, really. Well, tough to say, but I think so many things stem from self knowledge and self acceptance, and that can include not liking what you do. But the deeper you've gone into something about yourself and your life, the less other people can rattle you about it. I mean, first of all, just very simply, you almost never get insulted by things you don't think are true. For me, that's such a huge insight because anytime someone says something that rattles me, it means either on some level I actually agree or I'm not cemented. Enough in myself, my self perception. I haven't squared that away enough so that I know distinctly it's not true. So I don't need to, you know, devote any energy to, to considering it. But it's so cool because what initially is an insult becomes a, a query that's really useful. It's like, what do I need to do? What do I need to know? But even with things you're not fully squared away with, the things you're not satisfied with, knowing that you're not squared away, knowing you're not satisfied with it, having explored it deeper than the insult that's levied at you also makes you resilient. It's like, yeah, I know better than you. No one knows that I suck in this area more than I do. If you only knew the half of it, you know, and in terms of just debate or, or conflict, Or confrontation. A lot of times people are not really looking to be right. They're not looking to address an issue, though it's easy to get caught up in that, that game. It's more likely that they're trying to win over you, to gain some upper leverage over you, to weaken you, often in an attempt to reestablish the things in themselves that they're not confident in. And in that light, a way to totally disarm someone often is just to agree with them. Like, yeah, you know, you have a point. What now? You know, what are you going to do? Where do you go from there? Prolo is like, yeah, it's pretty bad, k o n And you tell me, what's your solution? What do you know about my life? What do you know about Meteor City and running the Phantom Troop? I'm calm, damn it.、Uh, I feel like this is going to egg Kripika on. It's going to require massive self control. <laughs> Making Kurapika open up arc. Everyone's trying so hard. You're not alone. That's poor guy. He's gonna fold. This is a bad one. Any super expendable offers no value. Protect the dogs. Oh no. Aww.、Oh. I hope he makes it out. Watch him not fold. Not folding arc. His loves breaking arms. That's her thing. What's your quirk? Arm breaking. He had nothing to do with that. Well, as far as he knows, that's true. Yes, Eliza and my dogs. Oh, yeah, right now you know. That's really good knowledge to have. She kind of played her trump card here. No! That was so unnecessary. That was so unnecessary. He's just itching to do it. Eliza felt that. Damn it, I ended up really liking him. Memory bomb. It seems like just talking would, do, would suffice, but okay. How much time do we really save? <laughs> We've been exposed. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> I thought we were like de escalating the tension, but we're, we're ramping up. Damn, that guy had an arc, that dog guy character. He had a whole story. He had a girlfriend. He was going to move on. I mean, I knew that was going to be the death of him. He went from being the, the foliest, folding more easily than a beach chair, to like not folding in the face of the Phantom Troop. It's sad, but it's an arc, I guess. Still feels tragic and unnecessary that he died. But why do they not afford fortune teller readings for the crew? I guess they were just lowly henchmen. But you'd think it would help tactically. Put down the eyes. Gone. Kilua. Hunter Cyclopedia. Nobunaga. Yeah. And once they're crypt him into the troop. 
it's so amazingly done how having a general sense of Gon and who he is, though he continues to surprise me, and knowing a little bit about the Phantom Troop and seeing how they operate, Gon is such a good pairing with them, even though there is real danger, and I guess we also know that Gon won't die as the protagonist and there's more series, but I just feel like Gon is fine because he's a presence people like the Phantom Troop would take to. They would admire him, see them as one of their own in a very key sense, and wouldn't kill him frivolously. There would have to be some like really good reason or threat to them. I think the deeper you go into life, and other people, the deeper and more complex your assessments of who people are and where they fit into your life. Initially, it's based on very surface level things like taste, hobbies, political preferences, though I've learned that's controversial, and more about like what level of depth are you also on. In that way, people who are antagonistic can still be people that I end up really liking, admiring, wanting to be friends with. It's like trying to convert Luke to the dark side instead of killing him. It's also really fun to, to watch my own feelings in reaction to the Phantom Troop because they're awful, they're horrible people, they're murderous. Can't help but really be drawn to them and enjoy looking Looking at things from their perspective and being with them and I find myself really liking them despite how terrible they are and so you wonder why is that what is it about them and it goes back to something I think I said about Kimberly a long time ago and also going back to what I was saying earlier about self-knowledge which is that actual depth is kind of rare there's nothing really impressive about being good in a very unexamined way like people who are good and follow the law not because they actually are good and know who they are and have a worldview but because it was sort of handed to them and they haven't really thought out of the box besides that they don't know why they do what they do it's not that they're good it's that they're afraid of retribution it's tempting to say that that's better because at least they're doing good things, but looking at things in a systematic way, those people are often the first to do the worst evils because they're just following the, the ebbs and flows of the group. Evil people who know who they are, at least they know who they are. I was thinking about this listening to someone I don't agree with on a lot of things, but like I realized we don't agree on individual points, but usually when I disagree with someone, it's because I can trace it back to a question they're not answering or addressing, but this person had answers, it's just the answers were different from mine and it was very cohesive. And it's like, oh, I see. He overcomes this weakness I'm perceiving with this different action and trait. And and that actually is consistent. So rather than disagreeing, I end up just chalking it up to like, okay, we're le leading different lives and that works for him and this works for me. There's a richness in that consistency. And I think that's also partly why I, I always say, or I always want to take the highest form of the argument because a lot of the time, if there's a repeated problem in discourse or on an issue, while the instinct is to straw man it and take the, the weakest form of it and destroy it, a lot of the time, there's just a, a really difficult question that is being answered differently, but it actually is consistent with an overall picture that, that does make some sense based on more subjective joints let's say in the skeletal system of the argument where the person just feels this way rather than this way another thing about the phantom troops outlook is that while it's not the highest there are a lot of devastatingly villainous elements of their outlook clearly i have a little bit of a soft spot in that particular brand of villainy especially in a doggy dog world like hunter hunter where it's like i'm gonna start with taking care of the people I really care about. That in circle, out circle, where in the in circle, highest morality, and in the out circle, well, they can fend for themselves. One way to judge a moral philosophy for action is to take it and then like apply it out to see how it works universally. And people in a bubble taking care of their bubble and everyone doing that across all bubbles is not the worst way humanity can function and might very well be how humanity functions. The highest likely being something like, I have no enemies, Orphan style, my bubble is the whole world, etc. It's also really interesting to look at the Phantom Troop in comparison, contrast to the protagonists, because I don't know if they're like that refined in a way that's so much better than the Phantom Troop, you know? They also are very much like, this is my bubble, I'm gonna protect it. <laughs>